Hey everyone, Raider here. Hope you're all doing great and having a fantastic day. So in today's video, we're going to be doing some video editing and rendering with DaVinci Resolve 18.1.4, which is the latest version at the time of the making of this video, on the Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360. A uh, little spoiler alert, this machine handles editing very well. I think you're going to be pretty impressed with it, as am I. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set up a sample project real quick. we got DaVinci Resolve already open here. Let's take a look at some of our sample files so we can all be on the same page here as far as the footage we're working with. Um, and if you see me looking up, that's because I'm staring at my uh, TV that I have this connected to. Just makes for a lot easier session here. So let's take a look at one of these files here real quick. We'll check out the properties. So what we are looking at is 3840 by 2180, uh, 30 frames per second footage. So 4K 30 is what we got. We're going to throw some of these on a timeline, a little bit of 1080p, a couple images, some audio, some fusion titles. And uh, we're going to stress this laptop out as much as possible by using a 4K timeline without proxies. So basically a recipe for failure, not success, uh, because we really want to tax this machine. Um, and I'll tell you right up front, I'm not going to waste your guys' time. If you're looking to edit 1080p footage, no problem. No problem at all. You'll breeze right through it. But the test here is for 4K. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let's got DaVinci Resolve here. Let's start a new project. We're going to go ahead and call this Test 3. All right, let's get going here. All right, I'm going to do something now that I never do, and that is switch my timeline from 1080p to Ultra HD. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. Again, we want to set this up to be like its worst performance possible. You know, we want it to struggle here because I want to see how much it's really going to tax this machine. Um, let's see here. Let's go ahead and switch to edit mode. Uh, let me grab my media pool here. Let's grab some footage. Let's throw some 4K in there. It's going to prompt me to change the uh, frames per second here. We'll do that. All right. Footage is getting added right now. Give it just a second. All right, there we go. We'll go back one. Uh, we'll upscale a 1080 clip here. Let's go ahead and just throw something on here. Let's throw an audio track into the mix, right? Some background music. This is some uh, free music for content creators from YouTube. Let's just grab a couple tracks here. We'll throw them in the background. Cool. Did they get added? I don't know. Let's go ahead and try again. There we go. That looks more like it. And let's grab a couple images. How about a Samsung logo? That's cool. And I wonder what this looks like if I throw it on there. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we've got some content that we can throw onto our timeline. Let's go ahead and uh, get rid of that media pool there. No, never mind. Let me just throw that back. Let's get some footage on here. Uh, so let's do this 4K TV. And what I'm looking to do is probably about a 10 minute clip. Because keep in mind, any machine that's going to have integrated graphics is going to take about three to four times longer than your actual uh, video length to render. So if you've got a 10 minute long 4K video, you're looking at probably a 30 to, four, 30 to 40 minute long render time with integrated graphics on like a non-H processor. This is a P series, not an H series. So rendering is where we're going to suffer from. But the, the other thing too the part that's important for me personally is editing because when I'm rendering, um, that's what I'm doing other stuff like making my thumbnails, creating the description, working on my title. So I never like sit on any one step during my process. So for me personally, editing is where it's at. It's what I care about the most because once you start the editing process, you're in it, you know. Um, another thing too, uh, no, scratch that. Hold on. Let me see here. We've got... 10 minutes worth of footage, that's perfect. So let's go ahead and we'll shrink this down a little bit. Let's go ahead and add another one. Um, we've got this on here, let's see. We'll throw this here. Let's chop this down a little bit. Get it down too. Yep, about 10 minutes still, cool. All right. Go ahead and drop a little bit of cave footage of a fan up top here. I did this in last year's video. It's kind of funny. We'll go ahead and copy this out a couple times. Just trying to see how this timeline performs here. I got to tell you, everything's real-time response as far as there be any type of lag. You know, where I'm clicking, the pointer's going to. Let's go ahead and scrub the timeline a little bit here. 
take a little bit to catch up, but there's no like uh, jitteriness or anything like that while I'm going through it. It's doing pretty darn good. Grubbing along. Not too bad. All right, let's go ahead and we will drop. I'm going to actually, we're going to take the volume here on these, bring it all the way down, and I will bring in an audio track. Let's do that down here. Let's grab another audio track. We'll put it right here. All right. Cool. Copy both these. All right, we got enough to cover our whole thing. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and grab a Samsung logo here. We'll drop that in. Let's see, I didn't see where it dropped. Let's put that right there. Stretch that out a little bit. It lets me. No, it won't. All right, so we'll just copy paste. Little big old logo there. We'll shrink them all a little bit. We'll put them on top. Okay, so we've got an uh, image there. Let's go ahead and put on um, some fusion text here. Fusion elements are a little tough to render. Um, let's go ahead and do this one here. Let's do a fusion title. Do, 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 do. And while we get going on the rendering, we're also going to check on the thermals, too. Uh, let's see. All right, cool. Let's see what we're working with here so far. We've got about a 10-minute long video. Uh, putting this together was no problems at all, no slowness or anything like that. Keep in mind, I didn't, I'm not using proxies. That's what's amazing me. So on last year's model, uh, anytime I'd work with 4K footage, first thing I'd do is set up the proxies. Um, actually, I'd just set up the uh, proxy manager to listen for the folder. You can set up a watch now with DaVinci Resolve 18. Just set up a watch folder to pull in all of your files that you drop into it. I'm not even needing to do that on the timeline here. So uh, this is pretty awesome. I am really impressed with this compared to last year's model. So let's go ahead and set this up for rendering real quick. Uh, let's see here. We'll go ahead and where am I at? Go down to rendering. Oh, I need to save this project real quick. Hold on, let me do that. There we go. So we'll go back to YouTube and go back to custom. All right, and our resolution is 3840. All right, so that's going to upscale that 1080p footage that we have in here. Frame rate is 30. I'm going to set the quality to high, which is what I default my YouTube videos that I export for my channel. And let's go ahead and add this to the render queue. Should prompt me where to save it. Cool. Go ahead and go on the desktop here. Oh, we will call this YouTube. We'll overwrite this file. Yes. All right, cool. Place. Okay, let's have to wait for. All right, so the moment of truth. Let me move myself over here to this side. And uh, I'm going to grab my S23 because it's only going to show estimated render times. And we want the actual total render time for a 10 minute long video. So I'm going to grab my timer here. Let's see here. All right, so I've got the uh, S23 Ultra here. Hopefully that shows up in view. I'm going to go ahead and start the timer right at the same time here that we start the render and let's go. All right, so our CPU is sitting at 100% now. It's ramping up here during the render and our GPU utilization is cooking here pretty good as well. Temperatures are looking real good. That's 75 degrees Celsius. That's that's totally good. So the utilization is fine. Um, the fans are also down quite a bit. And in case if I didn't mention it, I'm in high performance mode plugged in. So we've got this laptop like set up for maximum performance. Um, it's cooking through here pretty good. Uh, the fans are pretty quiet. I mean, they're going, but they're not, you know, anything crazy. Last year's model, it sounded like a 747 getting ready for takeoff. Um, these are a lot quieter this year. That's for sure. I'm not exaggerating on that either. I, I mean, I really do mean that. There's a big difference in the fan utilization and the thermals between this year's and last year's. That's actually the biggest difference I noticed. So, all right, we're going to let this render go through, and I'll be back with you guys in a little bit when this is done. Might check on the thermals once more. All right, I'll see you guys in a little bit.
All right, we're a little bit over the halfway point with the surrender now. Let me take a look at the uh, stopwatch. We're at uh, 13 minutes. So 13 minutes at the halfway mark, a little over the halfway mark. So this is actually churning through quite a bit faster than last year's model. Pretty darn impressive. Let's go ahead and check the thermals real quick while we're here and our utilization. All right, it's hitting that CPU pretty hard. Getting a lot of use out of that. GPU is about halfway. And our temps are looking good. Again, 75 degrees Celsius, and it just doesn't want to climb past that. The fan speed, low to medium, not too bad. It's not overbearing. It's not taking over the whole room or anything like that. A lot quieter than last year's model. Don't mean to make this a comparison between this year's and last year's model. It's just, uh, it's kind of in my head, you know, because I did a similar video like this last year, and I'm just really liking the uh, performance upgrade that I'm seeing here. It's actually quite noticeable. So we're going to come back here when it gets close to the end of this render. All right, we are right at the end of this render, 98%. We'll let this wrap up here. Should just take another minute or so. Let it finish up here. I don't want to get too distracted because I want to stop this stopwatch right when it finishes so I can show you guys this time. Come on. Almost done. I'm watching it. I'm watching it. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go. Do, 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 do. Come on. Why is that last 1%? Always got to take the longest. Come on, baby. There we go. Bingo. Stop. All right. So to do, let's see that time. 10 minute and 12 seconds. Let's see if I can get that on camera view. I don't know if it's going to show because I've got the, uh, the background thing to make it uh, not show stuff. We've got uh, 24 minutes and 13 seconds to do a render just over 10 minutes long. 4K footage, so basically two and a half times the content length, which is the best that I have personally ever seen on a machine with integrated graphics in my entire life. Um, do keep in mind, this is my second YouTube channel. Um, I also have a drone channel. Between both channels, I've probably put out about 500 videos, so I'm pretty experienced with this process. This is the most impressive performance I've seen from a machine with integrated graphics, period. Um, ever like ever so i am actually just completely blown away by how fast this render went i'm also extremely impressed with how well this machine handles the editing process which is by far the most important part for me personally because like i mentioned earlier once the rendering starts that's when i get busy with my next steps you know i minimize resolve i hop into canva and i, I get to work on my thumbnail and work on my description and then usually I'll go back to the render and it'll be done and I'll start the upload process while I'm still um, working on the thumbnail and wrapping things up. So I am never waiting on rendering. You know, here, so here's the thing. We're going to wrap this video up. I want to just provide some synopsis. My son here is kind of acting up a little bit. Be quiet there, bud. <laughs> um, so uh, here's my thoughts on this. This is definitely a lot better than the last two Galaxy books. I've had the first one and the second one. They've both been on this channel. This one blows those two out of the water when it comes to video editing. There's no doubt about it. I can say that with 100% confidence. You know, my takeaway, though, is Samsung. How about giving us a Book 3 Ultra with S Pen support, right? Because that's really kind of what a lot of us that are creative professionals or, you know, have YouTube channels or are working with ads and anything to do with media, anything like that. It's really nice to have a machine that does it all because the thing with the Ultra is yeah it's great at video editing but you can't do any of your other creative tasks with it like for me personally i live and die by this thing the s pen i need this s pen to annotate my notes to prepare for videos to um jot down all my bullet points that i want to go over with you guys i live and die by that s pen so for me the book 3 pro 360 was kind of the obvious choice because uh you know most of the time i edit on my desktop but I'll tell you what, I used the Book 2 Pro 360 for five weeks straight on my channel last year when my SSD on my desktop went out. I was in no hurry to replace it. It worked great. And this machine works even a lot better. So if you're looking for an all-around machine, something that you can do all your other creative work, you know, besides just editing, I think this is a great machine. I really do. I, I think you'll be totally happy with it. And if you're working with 1080p footage, no problem. 
this thing will rip through 1080 p 1080p footage sorry uh like this 10 minute thing here this would have taken like five minutes to render you know you'll be just take a restroom break come back and you're ready to go so 1080 put 1080p footage sorry no problem at all 4k footage really impressed with how well you know, you can go about on your timeline and scrub through it. Keep in mind, we didn't even use proxies. If you use proxies, that just makes everything 10 times better. So we put it through a worst case scenario. I'm pretty impressed. I think it's a pretty darn good laptop all around for, you know, your occasional editing. Or I should say, you know, you're doing like an edit a day and you have other tasks that you're doing as well. You know, like, uh, you know, getting things ready for your videos. So, yeah, if you have any questions or comments about today's video, please drop them down in the comments section below. Uh, keep in mind, we have the weekly Q&A. So if you have any questions that you want to see featured in one of those videos, please drop them down there as well. I always do appreciate your time. And as always, thanks for watching.